invite Emmanuel onto stage and welcome. Big warm welcome. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Awesome, awesome. So, uh, what I'm going to be doing today will be a bit different. But before I start, the whole concept of my life is art. I want us to start differently. I want us to activate positive energy with music. I'm not going to rap, I'm not going to sing, but I want you guys to stand up, everybody. You know, yeah, if you can, stand up. Upstairs, you stand up. Okay, what's gonna happen is, the sound that is gonna play, interpret it your own way. I'm gonna contribute. If you wanna copy me, cool, yeah? But let's just go with it. Let's just connect with the sound in the instrument to see what it can do to our bodies, yeah? You guys wanna do that? So that we can, by the time we all sit down, then we're, at, we're gonna be at the same frequency. So, uh, that's what I'm waiting for, so it's gonna start waiting for the DJ. The first track. The first one? I didn't pay him, so that's why I <laughs> Okay, all right. A bit more volume, more volume, I wanna hear him, I wanna hear him here. Okay, follow me. It's a warm up, you know? It's moving about our body.
travel around the world where I share my experiences for social emotional learning to create conscious global awakening. But now I created something called my life is art. Um, if please you could go back to So my life is art is about us recognizing our lives as a work of art that we create to spark consciousness. Just think about it for a moment. You yourself as the master that is gonna be walking inside to present the piece of art that the rest of the world want to see. Now, this festival is artistic, you know. Coming in, I thought uh, I died. I woke up in the morning and I thought, did I die or my life? Because there were so many beautiful women, they looked like angels. <laughs> and you see men were so cool. Everybody laid oh. back doing their thing. And I said, wow, I am among my tribe. These are my people. I should move here or something. <laughs> and so, uh, so I want to give a big shout out to the Bali Spirit Festival for bringing us all around the world here. So you guys know. That's uh, my word of gratitude. So, as I, we, before we go, and I want to begin with a question. Who owns your mind? And if you have a paper or your iPhone, uh, there are certain places that I'll, I'll, I'll probably ask you guys to get involved. You write certain specific thing, and I'll show you why in the end. Cool. So, the question begins, who owns your mind? Is it fear, worry, anxiety, poverty? Your boss, Nike, Burger King, what is it? Who owns your mind? Because the battles are fought in the mind and they are won in the heart. Whoever owns your mind owns you in everything you create. What owned my mind in the past was something called trauma. And what is trauma? Trauma is a soul murder. It's a mental genocide. It's like an invasion of demons to occupy space in your mind. You can't think, you can't get a chance to engage your mind to function the way you want. In the day, there's flashbacks after flashbacks 
At night, it's nightmares. You have nowhere to run. You're suffering from inside. Your view about the world is different than the normal people. Your loved ones will be there, but sometimes you can't get to understand what they're saying and even affect their lives. So, the war visited me where I was peaceful. When I was in the place where there is war, those things were not there. But now, where the war wasn't there, all of this thing visited me. I wouldn't focus in class. Did you teach? Hours passed by, pen too heavy to pick up. And you see dead bodies, kids burying their own dead. You know, head blown off, villages, mama screaming, people running different directions. All of those things, a moment, like three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, if you're stuck in it for long, it's hard to get out. And so, but how did I get out of it? I got out of it using my life as art, which is a philosophy, whereby we as human beings recognizing our life as a work of art that we create to spark consciousness. So each and every letter there represents a principle. So some of the principles, I have practiced them for 30 years. And I did a self-study and said, I want to create something that I can follow and guide. So I had it in my mind. But it took me now, last year, when I decided, hey, I want to study myself. What did I do here? What are the things that I did here? Why was I happy? What names can I give these things? So everything, what I created, it felt under my life's heart. So M is what we're going to focus on. So M stands for meditation, Y for yawning, L for lead. I ideas, F focus, E endurance, I intuition, S sagacious, A action, R breed, T train. So it's a militant spiritual approach to getting yourself in order to catch up with the rest of the world if you're left behind. And so one of my favorite part is M. Because one of the things I came to find is for me to have freedom, I had to fight myself. I had to liberate my heart and unite it with my mind. And the other challenge was engaging my mind to do what I want was one of the greatest challenges. To be able to think. Now, when you come from a survival mentality, it's hard to think and reason, even to see the future properly, because you're stuck on that survival mentality. And so I'm going to stick on M, meditation. But meditation has got like, my form of meditation, I know a lot of you guys meditate, but the style of meditation I created for myself is different. Nobody taught me this. I didn't see a psychiatrist or somebody to help me with a the therapy. So, and this is why I think the universe is amazing. When you make yourself available and you're seeking something with your heart, it can still connect you and teach you, even when nobody's there. And so, so I, I did the study and everything that I did fall under 10 principles in meditation where one of the principles is gratitude. And the other one is forgiving heart. And the third one is faith. And then fourth one was positive mindset. Then the fifth one was programming or reprogramming of self. And then there was six would be purpose. Then the seventh one would be courage. And eighth one would be calm. And nine one would be feeding of the soul or soul food. And number 10, would be love. And so here I'm going to focus, I'm just going to pick two principles. 
to share with you, but I would like you guys to pick the third one. So I'm going to pick courage and programming of self. What would you guys want me to put as the third one? Anyone want to suggest? Love. 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 Okay, so I'm going to talk love last. So, courage. So if you have your note, you can write. You could use this somewhere. Everybody in this room is really filled with the spirit and kindness and greatness. And so, but I'm also going to look for a volunteer later on. Would you like to volunteer? Fantastic. Because we want to capture some of the, the, the things that everybody here is going to say, so we'll use them later. So, courage. What is courage? Courage is the force inside us that helps us overcome fear. But to gain courage, you must have something you believe in. And you must understand that fear is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, and failure is an infinite source of intelligence. So going back to how my life is, how things work, one thing I came to understand is when I take courage, I see opportunities. When I walk in fear, I see nothing but just help, and my whole situation terrifies me. So I want to share a little story where I exercised the courage. We just lost the battlefield, me and a young child sold it. And we ran a couple of days, we haven't eaten. We threw away our guns. And we arrived in a place which was a refugee camp. But in this refugee camp, the food was only available to the blind, the lame, the VIPs and the security guards. So everybody out there was starving. And so I was with this young man who was older than me. I think he was 13 and I was around 11. And I told him, we are going to eat in that compound. And he said, how are we going to eat? The security guard, we're going to get beaten. And I said, all we have to do is pretend we're blind. So, an idea came in my head, and so I took courage on that idea. And sometimes we think like angels don't speak to us. If it was a demon, then it was a good idea to save me. But I think it was an <laughs> angel speaking. So, I turned, let's go around the river. We put dust in ourselves even more, so we look more needy. And I had to roll one of my eyes out which became painful as we went on, because the dust was blowing in. And as the dust was blowing in, and then it's a dry wind, so my eyes started leaking down, and my nose was drizzling too. But here, what happened is, I moved toward the gate. When I start to look behind to see where my other friend is, he's gone, he was scared. But I continued with the journey. Toward the fence, one of the Eight workers saw me, oh poor little kid, he's blind, he can't see. So all I told them is, I'm hungry. So they took me where there is food. I went, I ate. My belly was so full. But I forgot that I'm supposed to be blind. So my eyes popped up open. <laughs> and now somebody knocks, this kid is not blind, so I took off. Before I was at getting the gate, they caught me, gave me some slashes on my bottom. But the point here is, I got my belly full. I saw an opportunity. I didn't harm anyone. It was just an idea. Before, how we used to do, if we want food or soldiers, we would raid the village. Sometimes people get killed. We take their food by force. Here, I apply wisdom. <laughs> and ideas to get myself there. And so I thought I would share that part. So to gain courage, we must have something we believe in. So my question is, 
What is it you believe? What is your belief? And probably from here, I want us to write a belief statement. Because the belief statement will make you stand up. The belief statement will get you off the bed. Because when you believe, it's not you alone, it's yourself, it's your heart, it's your mind, it's your entire system. Would you and the universe will understand this is where this person stands. So you're no longer alone. And so, what is it that you believe? And from here, this is going to be a collective learning. I don't want to be like a person just presenting. I want us to contribute. What is it that you believe? Because your belief brought you this far. Your belief is what makes you give love. So what is it that you believe? Anybody want to add a sentence you can write? I'll write, I'll say, I believe in justice, equality, and freedom for all. And for that, I can die for it. That's how belief will take. Another, I was in a school and a young kid said, I believe in protecting my family, my friends, and my community. Is that, would anybody temper with that kid? Would anyone temper? So that kid is an activist, that kid would protect. And so, Anybody want to add, what is it that you believe in? Can we have the other mic, please? The other mic. For the guys up, if I don't see you, just say, Boo! So I can see, because I can see from If you want to add anything. What's your belief? Okay. Where's, where's the second mic? Yes, please. <laughs> Like, so that everybody else can hear. Thank you. So we're going to write a belief statement that we all believe in. So when we leave here, we're united. So, oh, the mic is not on. <laughs> okay, there. I believe that I am worthy of love and that everyone is worthy of love. I believe I am worthy of love and everyone is worthy of love. This is deep. I wish I had that line. It's awesome. You guys like that? If we like it, let's 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 enjoy it. Okay? Let's give our appreciation. Awesome. Yeah, because that means she's gonna love herself, and anybody around her will get a piece of that. They'll be loved too. I would hang out with you. You're so cool. <laughs> If you, have you ever hang out around somebody who don't love themselves? They'll give you help. Because if you don't love yourself, it's difficult to love somebody else. When you do like this, how many fingers are pointing back? You're like this. You're terrible. Or oh, you're this. So then you get like three hands. They tell you, oh, you're the same. So, anybody want to ask? I believe. Another belief statement. Okay. Where is it? Yes. I believe in the power of collective. She believes. She says, I believe in the power of collective. Yes. I believe in the power of collective. Do you guys love that? Awesome. Let's continue. We're going to write 10 belief statements. Anybody else contribute? Where are the guys? Yeah. Awesome. I believe we can live sustainably on planet Earth. I believe we can live sustainably on planet Earth. This guy's gonna yes. Awesome. Awesome. So you're gonna make the fish clean. I guess you must be a vegan. <laughs> I just, 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 just kidding. Thank you. I believe we can live in a sustainable planet. Bro, that's deep, man. When you start that cause, call me, I'll support. I'll tweet about it. I'll come to your rally. Because that's the future. If we care about the children in the future, you know, we got to start now. Anybody? Yes? I believe peace is our birthright. 
Huh? Our, I believe peace is our birthright. Birthright. Wow. I believe peace is our birthright. All right. Awesome. Everybody, let's do that. Right, mom. We got three more. Three more contribution. Yeah. Yes. I believe in telling personal truth. Oh, now you're making us become angels. <laughs> All right. I believe in telling personal truth. That's deep. Personal truth. No, telling personal truth. Telling. Telling, telling, telling personal truth. Wow. That's deep. You're the first it's person like I you, right? Yeah, yeah, but yours is deeper. <laughs> I hide I hide certain things. <laughs> but now you inspire me. <laughs> you inspire me. Anybody wanna add? Yeah. Alright. Okay, yes, two of you. Yeah. Yes. Everything can be shared. Okay, there's a mic coming. And then it's you, brother. That brother, it danced. Did you guys see him today? That guy at the back. One of the coolest dancers on the planet. You, this one? Yeah, Jamal? yeah. The one Jamal. sitting next to you, yeah. Yeah. Jamal. Yeah, it's so cool. Very cool. I believe everything can be shared and everything can be healed. Wow, I believe can be shared and everything can be healed. Everybody, let's just go. Let's go. Okay. How many are that? Do we I have believe training? I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Who's the, who's that the, where's the person? I believe I can fly. Should we, should we take that in it? Should we sing it? All right, let's go. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. That's how far I can go. <laughs> all right, awesome, 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 girl. So we all believe we can fly, even though we don't have wings. That's why we have planes flying. We go to the moon. <laughs> so it's deep. I like it, bro. Thank you. Thank you. One last one. Is it ten? Okay, the last person. One last. Who's gone? Yes, brother. I believe if we understand the problems, we already have the solutions. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> I believe if we understand the problem, we have got the solution. Bro, I think you are in this. You are in the spiritual realm. <laughs> May I ask, what problems are you solving now? Because this is a deep question. Yeah, it's a long story, man. <laughs> um, I think that we try to solve the problem to let people collaborate together to, yeah, find a deeper purpose in life. So I think a little bit the same as you. So that's where our logic is about, man. <laughs> oh, man, you're a philosopher. I like it, man. You're awesome. What's your name? Andrew. Okay, for all people, Andrew. Everybody give, him, give Andrew a hand. So, so that's our belief statement. We're going to recite it later after the workshop. And then the next one would be, because belief, the knowledge, the wisdom, failure, infinite source of intelligence. So knowledge, I guess you all know about it. So for me, one thing I came to understand is I have to constantly empower myself. You know, when I became a rapper, I didn't know how to do it. I got kicked out of studio several times. So I would watch American rappers and said, this guy just talk over the beat. Then I go to the studio, talk over the beat, but I didn't know there's an art to talking to the beat. So the producers just didn't get out. But I had that burning desire that I can be a rapper. And then I knew it. If I seek the knowledge, I'll gain confidence to be able to do it. 
And so what does knowledge do to us? Knowledge helps us enhance our skills and our talents so we become better staff. And so I took that journey to learn more so I could have more confidence because once someone tell you cannot do it, it crushes me. When I was kicked out of the studio, it took a while to always motivate myself to go back to the studio because I knew that the next person is going to say So I was kicked out of several studios until I found one person who say, no, what you're doing is called spoken word, so it's okay to roll on the beat. And so, but I didn't want to do a spoken word, I wanted to roll on the beat. So I went and searched more, and every time I go, I began to imitate people like study beat by beat, they go one, two, three, so you say, you say, yo, peace, love, you, Aliyah, you, Hikawa, Hikawa. So I did that, then I just decided many times, and then soon I became a, a rapper. But what I want to share here is, I want to share, because I won't go deep in much knowledge, because all of you guys read books. I hated reading. That one, I hated it completely. I met a, a doctor in South Africa, and he took me out for dinner. They said in Africa, if you want to punch your message in to somebody, you got to feel that body. She took me for good food, and yeah, Ethiopian dinner, I ate and I was full. And he said, Emmanuel, you're doing everything right, but I just want to tell you, you're going to run out of content. So what do you mean, run out of content? He said, you need to read books. I said, where do I even start reading books? And so, at that time, I was only stuck on my story, so I didn't have courage to be able to talk different things like the things I'm talking to you guys about. You know, I would just tell my story, that's it, and I rock music. I don't want to comment or add anything else. But he didn't know that I have that fear of not starting something new. It took me probably after seven years, then I started saying, let me read. And when I started reading, it just added more vocabulary in my mind. And now, when even I'm asleep, words like, I'm, how many of you guys have ever slept and there's something that is motivating you as you're sleeping but it's not you? Anybody ever been in that situation? Like a voice giving you knowledge, you can do this and this, you have to understand this is how life is all about. It's just, they preach for you. How many have been in that Anybody have been in that situation? Okay, so I'm not straight. Thank you. And so that thing started when I started reading a lot and started meditating. I want to share a little quick funny story here where I found how knowledge helped me one time. You know, I was not aware about falling in love with a woman. First time I fell in love with a girl, I approached her and beat her up because I told her I didn't come to school to think about you, I came to study. And whenever I'm reading, you always come in my mind, I pass next to you, my legs shake, you have to be a witch. And so, and I thought, like, that's, I was convinced this girl is a witch. She did for me voodoo. I cannot think, because imagine you go to school. I think I was really, it was my, during my adolescent time. It was a hard thing. I didn't want to pursue that. I wanted to study, but it was so strong. But I managed to overcome that. But a situation came when I was actually ready now and understood what love is. And so one time there was a, a young lady I liked, and I saw I'm gonna have an opportunity to take her out. But I didn't have the, con the confidence to actually go out and do the things that men do outside there. Basically I knew I'm gonna have a chance to kiss, but I didn't know how to kiss. And I was scared, how do I even do it? So what did I do? A friend told me watch French movies. I didn't understand French, so I had to watch American movies, and I saw how they kiss, and then I would walk in the forest and see how uh, couples kiss, go close. Sometimes my eyes is just very close to the guy when they're doing it, and he would think I want some of what they're doing, but he didn't know I'm just studying them. And so I'd go home and I'd practice with the pillows take the pillow. So, 
What actually happened is, when the real day came, when I had the opportunity, how prepared I am with the knowledge and the confidence to overcome my fear, we kissed for two to three hours. You know, I know you're all lovey-doveys, but there is getting drunk in love. We never had alcohol, but that day we were walking home drunk in slow motion. It was the coolest thing. I know you guys are experienced. How many have ever had a, how many have ever got drunk in love? Just kissing. I had that experience, so I'm not alone. Alright, so I'm not weird. Thank you. So I thought I would share that. So so there is something you believe in and you have to have knowledge. You gotta seek whatever you're scared of. See if you can enhance your skills and encourage yourself. How does courage come about? It comes about our friends, our family members, the people we are with. Those are the people that give us courage. The people tell you, you can do it. Go on, you can do it. This is possible, you can do it. And those are the little voices that help us move forward. So in terms of wisdom, so when do we apply wisdom for courage? You know, Wisdom is basically the experience that we had in the past. And because we know those experiences, with time, they'll allow us to, in making decisions when to throw a punch or not to throw a punch, you know? For example, common sense is part of wisdom. Now, there's a name, a lion is coming and you're gonna face the lion bare hat because you have courage, you need to use a bit of wisdom, you know, because it's a lion. And so, but here, I'm gonna jump quickly. Before I go to show you guys what failure is to me, because all of these things are concepts that I have to study, and I'll do them personally. I'll, I'll go and act what I learn and put it out. One of the stories that inspire me whenever I think about it, when difficult situations come, this is a story I'm gonna share, but it's gonna be a shout out to women, you know? This is a, I was, I saw a workshop today of how women are gods. Women bring men to the world. And they also bring women to the world. That's deep. That's why I saw the brother was just doing his own thing. Like, so they put a star and women were being worshipped. It was amazing. I like it. So I want to give a shout out to women on this. There was, during colonial time, when the British came to where my tribe is, all other tribe people ran away and surrendered. And they bring the news that the people we're fighting with are not humans, they are gods and angels. They point stick at you, your head blow from a distance. So we can fight them. So the men from my uh, tribe went and challenged the British. And they had the experience, they couldn't get close. So they came and brought the message back to the women. And the women say, what happened? Oh, as the other people say, it's true. These people are gods and angels. We couldn't get close. People heads below from a distance. And then one woman said, do they have legs like you? The men say, yes. Well, do they have that thing that man has? Uh, Papa, Echo. November, India, zero, echo, zero. <laughs> you guys understand what I mean? Because there's, there's kids around, so do you digest? Did yeah. you guess? You know what it is? All right, so do they have that thing? Then the, women, the men say, yes. So the women say, then we're coming with you tomorrow. We're coming with you in the battlefield. And one woman said, we have a belief system here. A man is respected if he dies for what he believes in. Do you believe this land belongs to you, that these this children have the right, these cows belong to them? If you're gonna run away like that, what statement are you giving these kids? You'd rather die there, and if these kids run, they'll know how important their rights is. So we are coming with you. And the woman also said again, it was an old woman, we have a belief here. We shall not fear death because death is the unification with our ancestors. 
And so, we will come with you tomorrow. It was like a joke. They came, you know, the old school kind of wars were good. People arranged themselves where to fight. Like the British, those days. Now that they don't do it anymore, everybody hiding and then they bomb people. So they met. So the women were behind, you know, their men singing songs. And as they approached, people were getting shot. And when a man tried to run away, the men, uh, the women, grabbed the men and beat the hell out of them and moved forward. So the women went, some of them getting shot, they're singing song. Finally, they broke the defense system, they beat up the British and captured some of them. And it sparked bravery and courage among all other areas that it's possible to beat the angels. And why would I want to give women a big shout out? You know, the courage we have come from men. Just, if you want to see how it is, in my village, when a kid is brave, they don't say it's the dad. They will say it's the mom. Because what was the mom doing when she was pregnant? You know? What was the mom teaching the child? Because the mothers spend a lot of their time teaching. So women, I want to give you guys a shout out. Without you guys, we can't even eat. So we can't do anything without you guys. So a big shout out to you. And so the last part I want to share so we could go to the next part. It's called failure. To me, I look at failure, it's an infinite source of intelligence. And that's how I had to look at it, because I came to understand any person who has become successful has failed more than any other person. And I had the experience when I was in high school and primary school, where I used to fail, but I kept moving. But the worst was in high school. I got a grade called UN. I was so excited with the UN. I compared it as United Nations. So I went home, showed the grade to an elder. And what the elder said, do you understand what UN mean? I said, yes, United Nations. I said, no. It meant unclassified, ungraded. Fail is better. Imagine, that's what happened to me. And in school during that time, I used to be told I have a low IQ, that school is not a place for me. I should go somewhere and do carpentry or go to polytechnic school, get a specific skill and go to work. School is not a place. But my heart believed that I can, I can. School is a place for me because I want to be a part of solution. And so here you are, you've, been taught, you've gone to school, and you're told you haven't even failed. So I'm, I'm unclassified. It, was, it, it, took, it cut me to pieces. So I went and said, let me take courage in this. Because the belief I have that I am, I believe that I'm here for a reason and I'm going to be part of solution. So failing should not be, should not stop me from trying. And so I said, I'm going to school this time, but this time I want to fail. And so I went to school and I failed. I was happy. Other people didn't like it. But what happens, what is more important thing is, is how you feel inside, not what other people feel. And so, I was saying, at least last time I had a UN, now I have improved, I have a F, failed. And so, to process the information fast, it took me a very long time though. It took me a long time. I, I was taken to university with D's, E, and C. Went to study at the University of Westminster. I also had some other UNs, <laughs> but the university was going to accept with some, with some of the Ds for the subjects I wanted. 
I went there and I got maths 100% and I got physics 98%. And so you can see the progress. It took me probably nine years to become an A student. And so my belief gave me the courage to face the failure and was able to believe that there's an opportunity out there. And so, I think I'll wrap it this way. So that's courage. That's the principal courage that I use. And it's in meditation. And sometimes, how, if you don't have courage, how do you get courage into yourself? And, and I'm gonna go into the next topic about that. So, here, anybody have a question here? Has anything to share before we put courage away? Anybody? Or you guys wanna just sit like Greek, wise people, taking information, process it, and make a big idea out of it. So, so I'm gonna to go to the next principle, you know? The next principle, this is, I think this is one of my favorite principles. And I've been practicing this for 30 years. And it started, it came from my mom. But the next principle is called programming. So I, there was gratitude, that was the one I was sharing. Programming or reprogramming of self. What is it? Programming or reprogramming of self, it's about creating self-worth and values by hacking into your subconscious to redefine or define who you are by shifting your paradigm to create new habits that you can use to manage your skills and talents and using them to achieve your goals and dreams. Should I say it again? Yes. Okay. So, reprogramming or programming of self. It's about creating self-worth and values by hacking into your subconscious to redefine or define who you are by shifting your paradigm to create new habits that you can use to manage your skills and talents to achieve your goals and dreams. The, the reason why I like this part is because it's the part that brought the person that made me who I am now. And I'm still doing it, I'm not stopping it. And I wanna put this point across. Your environment has got the power to program your subconscious and your DNA. So if your environment has got that power to program your subconscious and your DNA. And the summation of choices you take every day is made by your subconscious. So what decision or what choices are you making every day? So basically what the point I'm putting here is if you're born poor, you don't have much opportunities. You're in a survival situation. So when you're in a survival situation, you can't see clearly, you can't think. Your view of life is different. And so that's where I was. So if you're born in a place with opportunities, when your needs are taken care of, no, when you live below your need, you're in a survival situation, you cannot think. But when you have your needs, then you have ability to think. When you're living beyond your needs, where you're supplying yourself with your wants, what happens is 
you get spoiled. Whatever you have begins to destroy you. And you begin to hate yourself. You become empty. So here, where did all this concept come from? Well, probably before I say it, I want to ask a question to you. What are the new habits you would like to create? So that's the question. If you're not writing it down, thank you. What are the new habits you'd like to create? And what are the ones that you want to drop? And the second question is, who are you? Because the environment has defined who you are, but now you can define you, yourself. So I'm going to show those two steps. Who are you? And what are the habits you want to create? So I want to show a little story here, probably two stories, about how I was programmed. Being born in a war-torn country and living in Kenya, I came to realize that I want to go this way, but I ended up going this way. In school, whenever there is a fight, I am in a place where there is fight. Whenever there's an argument, I am there. Somebody step on my toe, I punch back. Some things I did them just for fun because I want to let you guys know, violence is fun. When you have the gun, the adrenaline kick in, when you're going to fire that gun or go and kill people, it's fun. The only sad thing is, when you come back and all your friends are gone. That's what is sad. Or maybe you get hurt. But when it kicks in again, now on a subconscious level, when you're raised in a violent background, what happens is you'll always be attracted to the negative situation. Even the probably you decide, I'm not going to punch anybody. But your body is traumatized, your cells, your mind, everything. They don't know that these things are harmful to you. And so, I ended up getting attracted sometimes to the wrong guys, people, or into situations that takes me away from where I want to go. And so, and then I said, okay, how can I go this way? This is not me. I don't want to be this. I don't want to be going to be drinking and clubbing. I, I want to I wanna go this way. People are dying in my country. People are suffering. I have an opportunity, you know. The other thing is about programming. I did not understand love. Because when someone was too touchy-touchy and love the I get off, say, can't do it. A British aid worker called Emma McCune was giving me so much attention, and I'll have fight. Don't you have your own children? Why are you bothered about me, you know? Just mind your own life, you know? So like I'll say harsh thing. I didn't understand that kind of love because I didn't experience it. It's always violence. I have an idea about love. I want to experience it, but now it comes. I don't know how to take it, you know? I didn't even know how to behave or appreciate somebody giving me love. I didn't even know. You know, and so it got me into a lot of trouble. So I had to create new programs. One of the things that helped me was what my mother taught me when I was a kid. My mother told us that she has an eye hanging in the house. And she tells us she can see us wherever she is. So milk powder and sugar. In South Sudan, that time there was no chocolate yet, so we didn't have chocolate. But milk powder and sugar, kids love them. And so, when mom is away, we'd climb up, we'd steal it and eat it. But mom comes one day and asks me, Emmanuel, that time she used to call me Jal, did you eat the sugar and the milk powder? I said, Mom, I swear to the living God, I did not touch any of this. 
All my other sisters and brothers confessed, but I didn't know. I was the only one denied. And then on, on my side here, there was, <laughs> it was me on power the start. And my mom was so angry, she pulled me to the side. You know like when the kids, your legs are hanging? And she said, I don't want to say what I am saying because you're not that. You're not a thief, you're not a liar. I don't want to say that because I don't believe it. And she said, I said, Mom, every time I say I did not eat it, oh, she just got crazy. And finally, I had a meeting, I said, okay, Mom, I stole the sugar and the milk powder. And then I closed my eyes. Because in Africa, you're allowed to beat children. I don't know here in the West, you can't. They'll call the police. There, I knew it, mom was going to hit me, but she didn't. She said, okay, open your eyes. Thank you for being honest, for telling me the truth. Because I know you're not a thief and you're not a liar. But promise me one thing, you're not going to do it again, and I'm going to tell you a secret. Imagine, kids love secrets. And that time, I wanted to know what is the secret. So I didn't want to promise, but I really wanted to know the secret. Your mom telling you, try it at home, get your little child, I want to tell you a secret. Even if they're playing a video game, they'll drop it down. They'll come, because I don't know why kids like secret. Maybe we'll ask psychologists, anyone in that army? So, what happened here, my mom told me, the secret is this. If anyone ever tell you anything bad, say 10 good things to yourself. And so, as a kid, I took that. Every time somebody says something bad to me, I'll say 10 good things to myself. But also, I mutated it into a different way. When I do something bad, I say 10 good things to myself. Like, let's say we invade a village, took food, and left people miserable. And I'll say, I'm really sorry people of this village, we're hungry. We're not bad as you think. We just wanted food for our bellies. But I am going to come back. I'm a good person. And I'm going to come back. And I'm going to be part of the solutions of what's going on. So I'll make sure I say, as this time, I did something bad. But it kept changing. I was just shown saying 10 good things to yourself. So and as that became like a little practice. Which now I came to understand now when you say things to yourself, you actually, if you believe it, that's part of programming yourself. And so now with the new knowledge, what are the habits that I wanted to create? You know, because I understood now if I go deeply is that you can create new habits. And those habits or those skills that you can acquire if you practice them for seven years, they become part of your DNA and you can access them. And so, why is programming important? You know, I'm not a scientist, but I'm going to speak on a spiritual level, connecting it with a bit of science. The thing is this, our subconscious works with our DNA. And how does it work? It knows our genetic wealth. Now, genetic wealth are skills and talents that you have inherited, passed by to you by your family members, passed by to you by your environment, which means you have in your genes, on all of us in our genes, it encoded information that can take care of past defeats, present, challenges in the future. Most of people go to school and they don't study what is the genetic work that they have so they could enhance it with education then they can function better. I wasn't a scientist person in school. If I only knew, like my mom was a teacher then and my dad was a police and a leader, I would have studied more stuff to do with speaking. I would have read more books then. I would probably go into marketing and I would probably be one of the top salespeople. 
you know, I would have started business there because my grandmother was an entrepreneur. So basically, those things were passed on to me. But here, because there was pressure, doctors, engineers, lawyers, it took me like seven to 10 years to program myself going through so much failure. Now in my DNA, I can be a scientist. I created, I even created a superfood for those people who are there. I'm a chemist. I failed so many times, but now I even have dreams about creating stuff with electricity that don't need, that don't need fuel. But because I don't want to take those ideas, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I decided so I'm just going to be speaking. I'm not going to pursue engineering, but it could be there if I want to explore it. And so that's what I'm saying. What are the new habits you would like to create? What is that desire skill you would like to create? You know, and who are you? I'll show you the habits that I used to create. This is the program. You see this, you see this bead here? You know? I'll probably maybe tell you guys what this is. This bead existed in my mind for a long time. But it wasn't this way. I used to program myself with my fingers. And you know what is funny? When I got invited into Bali, probably I tapped into the Bali and Spirit Arena, and a picture came in my head. Why don't you create a beat? And I said, like, for all these years, just counting things on my fingers, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I get it from the Muslims, guys? Because they have it. I didn't understand what this is. There's a rosary. Why did it, you know, imagine you lie on the bed, you're, you're pro chanting, uh, maybe, I am, I am great, 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 thank you, Creator, for making me great, I am great, look, greatness is printed in my fingers, you know, I'm telling you this, because, let me show you, what I'm, the thing that I'm doing now, my latest, uh, Thing that I'm programming. Before, the things I was programming myself was about peace. That I am love, I am light. But you can't go and say that in public. You go and say that in public, people think you're insane. What did programming do to me? I used to lock myself in a dark room and I put emotions, sometimes maybe tears, so that that message can go straight into, into my head with a lot of energy so I could practice it for that way. And so, I used to do that in a dark room. Some from mom, and some because of being connected into the spiritual world to teach me, to allow me to exercise. And so, what is this thing here? So I made this in my hotel room. <laughs> so you guys, the guys in Bali, you're in the right place. So basically, the picture existed in my head for a week, but the practice has been in my finger for a very, very long time. And so, do you guys want to know what this thing stands for? So, there's only one on earth now. So, so this little bottom part, little fat one here, this is saying, when I hold this, I'll say my life is art. And I recognize my life as a work of art that I create to spark consciousness. And so I remind myself that in the morning, my life is art. I recognize my life as a work of art that I create to spark consciousness. If you can go back to the, the fly. And so, so this, the whole of this part here, this, this here, the whole, this is my meditation. Yeah. So, this here is the triangle. So this triangle, on top here is the purpose, and on the side here is my genetic wealth enhanced by education. So I studied all my genetic wealth. What kind of books do I need to buy? What kind of books should I read? Is there any desired skills I need to do? So I look for it. On this other side of the triangle, it's, this is problems. So I love problems because no progress without problems. So when a problem comes, I believe that I have the infinite intelligence to solve it, 
and it's, the problem is a gift to me that I have to study and explore and open it. And whatever it is, I find and then I share it with other people. Do you guys, do you guys believe this as I do? Every human being on our planet, you are as valuable as the problem we can solve. So what problem are you solving? That's the question. And then, the other thing is, all our souls are priceless. Our souls are priceless. But the universe here, there is fear. People are looking. Who's going to get out? Who's going to get out, out of the trouble? And so, I use this. So this is my triangle. I'll, maybe in the next, in the future, I'll teach about the triangle. I used to meditate on a triangle for a long time in a dark room until I get so I meditate to get that triangle until it become bright light. Then when it's light, then I connect with it, and I use that moment to fast track the the the, the programming that I want to create. So it's weird stuff I'm sharing with you. I think people are gonna watch YouTube and say, "Money was gone." Weird, but this is this is the force behind the scene that people haven't seen that I'm revealing here. And so, on these beats here, so all of this little one here, for example, one, the thing that I'm really into now is greatness. You know, I wanna do everything great. I wanna speak. If I'm coming here, I wanna give the best to the people, to the best ability. Long time ago, I used to settle for 40%, 50%. Even though I know I can go 70, I can go 80, I can do more. And so, I came to realize I didn't have a state, a co I didn't make a conscious decision in my mind that I'm gonna make things great. That everything that I do, I'll put time, I put some love in it, and I present it with quality. You know, I didn't have that thinking of becoming competent. And so now, I'm meditating on greatness. And so, and I begin to say, what does it take to be great? You know, and so greatness is a conscious decision that you have to take. And it has to be in the mind. And I came to realize most athletes think great. You don't go and shout out there and say I'm great, but you have to make a conscious decision. You know. I walk here in Bali and the amount of art that is there, the beauty that is shown, the mind of the person who designed them, they have greatness. In them. When you don't put greatness in your mind and get it into you to be part of you, it means there is poverty locking into your genes, pulling you back. So I came to realize poverty is the one pulling me back. Because poverty is very tricky. It comes in different ways. It can make you lazy. It doesn't want you to think. If you can't engage your mind to think, then what's, what is that? That is poverty calling. And so, so one of the thing is, so probably maybe the next two months, that's gonna be mine. And so like, here I'll probably say, oh, let me show you, I'm not gonna hide. So, on, this is program. So I say, I am great, I think great, I do great things. Thank you creator for making me great. Then I put the next one. And you know, I like it. I flew many hours. My manager was tired, but I arrived in Bali with a lot of energy, talking to her. She was just mashed up. I meditate. I program myself. And you know what happened with this? So, anytime I'm doing something, the chant comes. I am great. So, even as I talk to you, the chant tells me, do it great. You know, so, and even something, even something funny came in my head. So, if you're gonna, if you wanna make love with a woman, do it great, or don't do it at all. So imagine like, it's beginning to tell me everywhere, so this you two guys, too. Greatness can be everywhere. <laughs> if you're not gonna kiss great, 
donkeys at all. <laughs> so I'm just making fun out of it. So, so I use this. And so, and so, and then when I arrive here, this little round, bigger one, so I do 10, then this is like gratitude. So and then I stop there. What are the things that I'm grateful about? If it is the people I work with, whatever it is, then I talk. That's gratitude. Then the other one, so I continue programming, saying the same thing that I want to program myself. Then I come to what? Forgiving heart. Is there any person? Did I have an argument with anybody? Can I forgive them? Then I scan myself or go through, and I begin to check into my cells, my DNA, and do uh, asking even my DNA, forgive people who have harmed my ancestors. Do you guys know like our cells keep memory? When, you, when you're angry about somebody, the cells too are angry. When you forgive that person now, the only thing is you have to tell your cells to forgive too. And you have to also, even if you've caused harm to others, your cells keep the memory, you have to tell them to apologize. So I do, those are the weird things I do. You know, probably it needs some scientific approval, but it helped me walk my journey. So I thought I would share that. And then the next one, so there's all of these little things here, programming, and all of this here, when I go down here, this stands for yawning, then this stands for lead, all the way up to down here, train. So when I hike, type to B, yawning, then burning desire to do something, you know, do I have, is my fire to change the world there, or is my fire gone? And so, so those are the few things I want us to, to put, um, so what are the new habits you'd like to create? The new habit I want to put in my conscious now is to do things with quality, with greatness in it. Not thinking that it's not the greatness of becoming, uh, how do you call it, proud about it, but in terms of quality, you know, in terms of giving content, in terms of presentation. So if I chant it many times and it become part of my mind, then after a long period of time, it's gonna work. Just as much as I used to tell myself, I am love, I am peace, without anybody telling me, just following what my mother used to tell me to do. And I, I came to realize I am now doing what the love and peace is doing, even though when I was doing evil. You understand what I'm saying? You can continue to do evil, but if you turn things to do about peace and changing, with time, you're gonna. And so, I'm gonna stop here, then we can finish and have questions. But somebody suggested I say love. Do you guys have time? Or should we stop with these two principles? You want us to go deeper? So I mentioned love. Okay, so, but, what are the new habits would you like to create? If you can, she's gonna write them down. Suggest something. What is the cool habit you'd like to have? We're not talking about bad habits. I'm gonna give you one habit that I wanna create, you know? The habit I want to create now is, I'm working on one now, is to do things with greatness. The other habit I want to create is called competence. At least have a specialized, skilled, organized, you know, and have a better way of presenting things. So to have acquire specialized skill. I want to be goal-oriented. I want to be detail-oriented, because I'm in business. So those are the quiet thing. But now I'm starting with greatness, then later on I'm going to pick one of them. <laughs> so once in a time, so I use these beads as a way, because it take a while. It'll probably take me a couple of months. So what would you guys want to add? Anybody? What a new habit you'd like to create? Or you guys have reached all the good habits. <laughs> Anybody want to contribute? 
Filmmaking. Huh? Filmmaking. Filmmaking. All right, awesome. So we write, you want to make film, filmmaking. That's deep. You're going to make it. Because you know what? Everything we're saying here, we are all in one. At the moment, the heavens are standing with us. So everything we write here, when we hope for it, it's going to happen. So we're going to have miracles. You guys understand what I'm saying? Because we're in collective consciousness, collective belief and we're putting all our forces together, and we're gonna recite this thing, things we're hoping for that will happen. Anybody wanna add something? Yes. Uh, I want gratitude to inhabit all my actions. Deep, man, you gotta say that, that's deep real. I want uh, gratitude to inhabit all my actions. Gratitude to inhabit all my actions. All right, man, deep. <laughs> Let me give you a tip about that, you know? I do this sometimes. I talk. How many have ever talked with the intestine? Your intestine, your blood, your brain. I did it another day, and I felt like I was going to float on the bed. It's the weirdest thing. So I say, okay, my heart, you work 24 hours. This morning, I want to say thank you for not stopping. My brain, you're amazing. I just want to thank you for this moment. My blood, you have been supplying nutrients to all. I just want to say thank you. Then I go to my eyes, my ears, and then like every, almost like I was saying, every, every, almost many organs in my body. Then what happens? Then I ask all of my cells to join, to be grateful to the source, the universe, and everything around. Can you join me in gratitude? thank the creator or the source for making us coexist because we're all different but we're doing one thing then my whole body it's kind of like it's like you can hear the cells doing something and i felt like i was going to soft float so i thought i would share that with you maybe try it try it when your girlfriend is not there she said like, hey you're floating <laughs> so anybody let's let's put 10 habits 10 habits 10 habits 10 habits we got two, yeah. Ask yourself every day the question if you're a little bit like, mm, should I do it or should I not do it? What should a person do who loves himself? <laughs> That's it. What should I do if I love myself? Whoa. Ask myself, what should I do that I love? Right, That's deep. I should eat healthy. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Can we add? Quickly. Yes. Um, just be a bit more courageous in stepping out of my comfort zone. Courage. Thank you for the contribution. Courage. Let's add it quickly, anybody? Courage. Self discipline, she wanna create that's a good habit, discipline. Oh Jesus, that's amazing. Anybody? Huh? Huh? Self healing? Did somebody say self healing? Okay, nobody say. Cultivate more enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Set. Cultivate more enthusiasm. Good habits, yes. Letting go of things that doesn't happen easily and gracefully. Letting things go. That, okay, I don't mess it. Letting things go that doesn't happen gracefully. Oh, letting things go that doesn't happen gracefully. That's the deep one. So basically, you want to let go. You don't want to hold on it. You know that's powerful? It's, it's like, it's almost like you're in love with a guy, but the guy is treating you bad, and you don't want to let go. Is that what it is? <laughs> I'm just giving a context we, that we can digest. It could be work. You're stuck in a, yeah. I like it, I'm just trying to eat it, so <laughs> I can digest. So, anybody? Two, two more lines? Yeah. Whoa, curiosity. 
I like that. I want to be curious too, so put that in. Yeah, curiosity. Anybody? Compassion. compassion. Yeah. Habit for compassion. They're coming up, guys. Let's bomb it. Let's let's throw them out. Try to inspire these one person. Whoa, this guy is deep. <laughs> Do you guys hear? Inspire at least one person a day. <laughs> Can we take that challenge? Do you guys want to take it? Yeah? Inspire one person. You could start with your kid. Or your auntie or your friend. Inspire one person a day. That would be good, man. Last one. Be as adorable as you. To be as adorable as you. Yeah! To be as adorable as you. Too, yes. To be as adorable as you. Ah, you know I'll use that line. Even if you meet a crazy bad person, tell them, you know what, I want to be as adorable as you. <laughs> what an amazing life, isn't it? You say, oh, I'm adorable. Ah, oh, yes, you're so smart. And then you say all the good things that are good about them. Then don't mention the bad stuff. Then adorable will enter in them. So, I like it. Anybody? You see, this is collective learning. I'm just sharing what I've experienced, but we could make it bigger to help us better. Pardon? Honoring our dreams and one another's dreams. Whoa. Honoring our dreams and one another's dreams and other dreams. I like that. So, those are what we have now. So, we have a belief statement. And then we have habits we'd like to create. And then the third person, who are you? Yes. Who are you? Does anybody know who they are? The coolest thing is, we can create ourselves. We can create the art we want. Is that not what it is? Our life is a work of art that we can create to spark consciousness. So now, with the habits that we're having, those habits will create us. Don't you think so? They'll put a certain way of, because it's a desired way we want to be. You could even start saying, I am kind, I am love, I am peace, I am joy, I am confident, I am who I am. You get what I mean? So shall we build an I am statement? Yeah? yeah. So let's do it quickly. All right. Cueing I am. So who I am what? Yes. I am love. Awesome. I like that. I am love. First one. The first line is I am love. Ne next person. Huh? I am an artist. Yep. I create Thanks. Next person. This girl, she's so smart. She's hitting her finger. You know what? There's a science. There's scientists study that if you eat your, if you're like this, it means you're so smart, super smart. So I am free. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. I'm free. Anybody else? Let's get ten. We left at seven. Yeah. Okay. I am open. I am open. I what? I am creation. Put it there. That is awesome. Anybody else? We ran out of time, so we're gonna do this. In the future, we'll talk about love, but this tool's principle can take us far. Don't you guys think so? So let's fill it up. Anybody? I am. I am abundance. I am abundance. I like that. Awesome. Let's fill it up. I am a student of yesterday. This guy is a philosopher. It's awesome. I'm a student of yesterday. Anyway, all right. Young man, would you like to contribute? Who are you? I am one of us. I am one of us. That's different. I'm a human being. I'm like you. Awesome. Like that. Yeah. All right. Any back? Contribution from that table, some wise brothers, sisters there. Huh? 
I am compassion. I am light. I am light. Yeah, how come we almost missed it? I am light, yes. Yeah. Anybody? I am myself, yeah. Yes, you got a good smile. Tell us the, what do you want to say? Uh, I am inspiration. I am inspiration. All right. I so, want, okay. I am a mystery. I am a mystery. Wow. Okay. Awesome. So I one. I am competent. I am infinite intelligence. I am a reservoir of information. So, that is programming of self. It's weird, but guys, it works. I've done this and it has helped me. You know, I'm hoping to catch up with those who have gone ahead. My past is ugly. My present is challenging. My future is beautiful because each and every day I have a chance to create it. And how do I have to create it? I require to create good habits. I require to educate myself. I have to reprogram myself to function differently. And for me, I want to show the last piece that I want to share. A British aid worker called Emma McCune who rescued 150 child soldiers. One of them happened to be me. Mm -hmm. And what did she do? She changed my environment. I had a dream. I had a vision. I want to be a part of solution. That because I had that, my resilience didn't die out. When I was given the opportunity, that's why I'm here. And so, I wanna end this here, and we could just, if we could, uh, if anybody has a question, so you could ask a question now, and then we'll close, we'll close our session. Anybody with a question? Yeah. All right, so uh, I once heard a wise man say that uh, the belief in trauma is the horse that trauma rides into time. And I heard you know you opened to kind of talking about trauma as sort of being the foundation of where you're coming from. And at the same time, I hear you saying it's all about reprogramming, and that essentially you're saying that same thing. That it's kind of how we believe about things. And your story is, is so powerful in a way that reminds me of, you know, reading Man's Search for Meaning, the Viktor Frankl book about the situation that he was in. And so I guess my question is, how much is it what we just tell ourselves, you know? How, how much of, of what, of how we see the world is just what we tell ourselves, from your experience? I hope I could understand the question. Is there another way you can put it? <laughs> how much of how, how much of our reality is just what we tell ourselves it is? How much of our reality do we tell how it is? I mean, the way I look at it, the reality is there. If I'm going to think about my reality now, I would not be able even to stand if I was to talk about the reality of what the situation. My family members are scattered all over in South Sudan. My father's in a refugee camp, he can't get out. Now, 60 people from my family recently got killed by my current government. I am a stateless person in Canada. I travel using a gray passport, which sometime I get stopped when I was stopped by a security, what kind of a passport is this? I told them, this is a passport that is given to endangered species. 
And so I'm not under protection of any country, but I'm given a document to travel with. And so if I talk about my reality, what I'm talking about is still happening. Child soldiers are still happening. We hear about refugee situation in Syria. That's a reality. But where did I position myself? I position myself that I'm going to be part of solution. This is a reality, but I'm going to pick one part and keep doing what I can. Because if each and every human being light that candle, that's all we require. Will the whole light up the entire planet? I don't know if I answered your question. Anybody question? So, if no question, okay. How did you go from your, because you have a business as well. Well, I was here last night, you were speaking about your business. Yes. You were speaking last night about your, your business with the, with the health food products and, and the superfoods that you are working with. But we didn't, we didn't hear how, when did that spark to do that come in and, and how did that come about or that became a focus? Well, it's, when, it's about when I studied also my genetic wealth, I came to realize my grandmother was an entrepreneur. And so, and now I have confident that I have a bit of that in my DNA that I can, I can begin to enhance it and become an entrepreneur. But what also inspired it is, most people don't really want to help Africa. Because what I came to understand, if you give people below their need, you control them. If you give them what they need, they'll be able to think and solve problems for themselves. If you give them what they want, you can kill them anytime. That's manipulation. But also, it's like you want them to do something. If somebody gives you what you want, they don't love you. They just want you to do something for them. And so, you go to an African village, the people ask for a pen and a pepper. Then they, somebody say, no, we need to dig your well. Then that well breaks. Then the chain, the poverty doesn't change. So people don't listen to the local people of what they think of as opportunity or for a solution. Other people think we have a better solution for you. And so it becomes a business of uh, trying to help. Then like wars are happening and you find jobs are created out of those people the more refugees happen. If you look at it, some people want to really gain one and left help people. And one person I'll say is Emma McKeon, the British aid worker, rescued 150 child soldiers. I was the only one. She smuggled into a different country and put me in school. So there are people out there. My suggestion would be to you, if you want to help, listen to the wind. Listen to the wave, listen to the sound of the people. What are they saying? Then suggesting this is how I would like to help you. into now, do you have any particular guidance? And if you do, um, you, you must have a lot of like information also. But how do you like uh, be sure which one is the correct one for you? Uh, one thing after a long period of time is I came to, after I learned to like break my heart through 
You know, when you don't forgive, when you don't have a forgiving heart, you're going to be biased and your heart, the wisdom of your heart will be corrupted. And so, the first thing is to liberate my heart so I could connect it with my mind. If my heart says it, then it's cool. It's right. But if my mind objected, it means I have to research certain information. But if my mind says something and then my heart does not agree with it, it means there's something bad about it. I don't know if I'm making sense. How many have been in a situation? Your heart say yes, but your mind say no. So if your heart say yes and the mind say no, then what it requires me, the mind just want to find out the solutions. But when the mind make a decision without the approval of the heart, it means you've been hacked into it. <laughs> so that decision wasn't yours. You've been forced to do it. Yeah. And so this is, each one of us will do a self-learning. And there's infinite information we can, each and every person. It's why it's a taking self-journey. There's a lot of information that come out of it. And I think that's why Buddhists do a lot of that. They will sit for days and meditate and realize certain things, certain knowledge that comes about. So we're done. So can I ask one last question, please? Okay, okay, cool. All right. Um, at how many places around the continent of Africa have you traveled? If you've been to every country, cool. Uh, but where have you connected with other people who are also doing the same work that you're doing? Uh, not only in terms of just bringing awareness, coming out of these situations like that you've come from, into a greater awareness, but also on a, on a spiritual and metaphysical, a spiritual sense that is beyond the, the constraints of religion, where you appear to be quite open, metaphysically, spiritually, to and having come up with a lot of stuff internally through your own personal work. Where else in Africa are there places where you met people who are also doing the similar things in a similar vibe as you? I mean, when I came to understand the roots. It doesn't matter what route you take when you go to the spirituality, it becomes the same thing if you follow the principle, because it's all about love. But now when you don't exercise it, and then you act on a bias of clinking to that belief that has been taught by you. Back in Kenya, that's why I travel. I go to Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, I haven't been into West Africa yet, but I've been in Central Africa, I've been in South Africa a lot. And I've met a lot of young people who do almost the same thing that I do. So guys, we're done. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do two things, then we're gonna finish it with a dance, yeah? So our volunteer is gonna come on the stage. Yes. If you don't want to come and stay, then you can. Because they have to see you so they can connect with your soul. There's an insurance, don't worry, if anything. There's life insurance from the divine, and there's an insurance in the building in case you break your leg. Come, come, come. I'm going to get some other volunteers to come and stay. So, good volunteers, young lady. You can come on stage. Annie, you're welcome on stage. You're busy in your phone, but you're welcome on stage. Come on, come on. Come on, sister. Come on. Come on. You too. Yes, bro. I gotta see you. You're busy meditating, man. Come on, come on, bro. Yeah. You guys are amazing. That's why you're in the state. Do you guys like them? Are we, do you like them or you love them? Awesome. So what we're gonna do now is, everybody if you can, stand unless there's health reasons that you can't stand. If you can, we're closing it. We're gonna do it this together. You guys, if you don't mind, would you like to stand up? We're gonna do 
the I am statement and and I believe statement. And what was the and there is the what one? And then there's who are you? Yeah? Who are you? Yeah? So so I wanna borrow the other mic. And so when she says it, we say exactly that. Is that cool? So and then after that we're gonna dance. So we're gonna dance and go crazy to celebrate because we're new people. So so we start with I believe statement. I don't think I'll think you will. Thank you. I want to personally thank you. Because I spent a lot of time in the Cambodian refugee camps in the Pol Pot era. And it's very tough for people. And that you have found the resilience and can share that with the world. It's beautiful. Thank, thank you. you, brother. Thank you. Okay, we're ready, all right? I believe in justice, equality, and freedom for all. I believe in justice, equality, and freedom for all. I believe in protecting my family, my friends, my community. I believe in protecting my family, my friends, and my community. I believe that I am worthy of love. I believe I am worthy of love. I believe in that everyone is worthy of love. I believe that everyone is worthy of love. I believe in the power of the collective. I believe in the power of the collective. I believe we can live sustainably on planet Earth. I believe we can live sustainably on planet Earth. I believe peace is our birthright. I believe peace is our birthright. I believe in telling personal truth. I believe in telling personal truth. I believe that everything can be shared and everything can be healed. I believe that everything can be shared and everything can be healed. I believe I can fly and that I can touch the sky. I believe I can fly and I can touch the sky. I believe that if we understand the problems, we have the solutions. I believe if we understand the problems, we have got the solutions. And have a better way of presenting. 
To be goal oriented. To be goal oriented. To be a filmmaker. To be a filmmaker. And this one I'm not really sure about. It's the gratitude to inhabit all my actions. The gratitude to inhabit all my actions. Was that it? Inhabit? Okay, that's good. Uh, my heart and cells join in gratitude. My heart and cells join in gratitude. That we ask ourselves what we should do if we love ourselves. That we ask ourselves what we should do if gratitude. The courage to step out of our comfort zone. The courage to step out of our comfort zone. Self-discipline. Self-discipline. Self-healing. Self-healing. <laughs> to cultivate enthusiasm. To cultivate enthusiasm. To let things go that don't happen gracefully and easily. To let things go that don't happen gracefully and easily. To be more curious. To be more curious. More compassionate. More compassionate. To inspire at least one person per day. To inspire at least one person per day. To be as adorable as you. To be as adorable as you. To honor our dreams and other and the dreams of others. To honor our dreams and the dreams of others. And I hope I haven't forgotten any of them. Let's fly everybody. Come on. Thank you. So stay there. We're gonna dance together. So everybody at the back, did you copy me? This is how we do it. Don't run away, don't run away. Okay, getting out of time, okay. All right, if you're in a hurry, okay, you can go. But those who are here, let's just dance. So it goes like this. One, two, three, boom. One, two, three. Ta, 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 ta. Boom. Pa, 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 To the side, ha, ha. To the side, ha, ha. To the side, ha, ha. All right, let's have fun, drop it. Drop it, drop it, let's have fun. Increase the volume. Alright. Pump it up, yeah. And this is us. And this is us. And this is us. And this is us. Everybody! 
And uh, it is wonderful to be here with you all. First and foremost, I want to thank the Most High for the gifts I've been given and for the opportunity to share with you all today. We're going to go on a little bit of an informal journey today, and this evening actually. And uh, yeah, I'll start with a little bit of flute playing, then I'll tell you some more stories, and we'll allow the night to flow as it will flow. And feel free to silence all of your phones or put on vibrate throughout the process of this wonderful. Thank you so much. Awesome, one, one person's complying. Very nice. travel all over the world and acquire different experiences and instruments and playing styles that allow me to express what I express. But in the beginning, I was uh, raised in a small, small Southern Baptist church in Georgia. And uh, that's when I first experienced music and soul and spirit. And I remember every Sunday, I was maybe a little bitty boy, like maybe two or three or something. And I can remember walking into the church and sitting on my mom's lap and at the beginning of every service, two deacons would stand up in front of a, the whole um, congregation, and they would have their nice suits on, dressed to the T. One had some white gloves on, because they were fancy, I guess. 
and they would start to, they had a Bible in one hand and they would read a scripture like, I know that life is beautiful. No, it doesn't change love. I know that there's a place where love resides. And they would stand in front of the congregation and begin a call and response. And it would go something like this. about 20 to 30 people sitting in the audience all responding from their same joys, their same sorrows, their challenges, their hopes, their faith, all singing the unison in their own voice. experience in music and my first experience of spirit. And it's been a long journey and it brought me to this very stage right now and I'll fill you in on some of those, those situations. So tonight, I'm going to begin with a song. This song is a theme um, to how I live my life or uh, aspire to live my life. Let love lead. Let love lead. Hey. 
fast forward about maybe two years ago. And I was sitting on the Ganges. Actually, no, I wasn't on the Ganges. I was in my, I was, went to India to learn how to play sitar. And I was sitting on the banks. Glad it's not carbonated rock star status. Um, so I was sitting on the banks of India with one of my uh, sitar teachers, and he was telling me a story about the reluctant soul. It was a Persian um, story, and I'll share it with you right now. So once there lived a soul in heaven with God, and the soul was reluctant. God had asked the soul one day to take a human body form to go, come down to earth as a human body and live a life. Now, the essence of a soul is to be free and voidless and be able to, to be expansive. So the soul was reluctant to follow this command. So God, being as wise as she is, told an angel to begin playing a beautiful harp. <laughs> And as the angel began playing the harp, the soul heard the sweetest melody it ever experienced in its entire soul life. And knew the only way to have a deeper experience of this sound was to embatten and inhabit a human body. So through music and through sound, the soul took place inside this human body and had a beautiful experience. And that key that they were playing was a key of love. I always like that story because it, it just reflects, to me it reflects the beauty of music, how tone can heal, inspire, and cause emotion. So while in Australia, I had a tour about four years ago and I was uh, sitting in my tent and I was saying a mantra to myself that I kept repeating over and over again. And as I sang this mantra, I began to put chords to it with a ukulele. And I was playing for about 20 minutes and I came out of my tent and I looked outside and there were 30 people sitting around just watching or listening to me play. And I was like, I should write this again at some point. So this song was entitled Forest of the Mind. Forest of the Mind.
Mm. How's everybody doing? I know it's kind of crowded in here, so be sure you use safety first. No elbows, no uh, mosh pits or anything, please. Thank you. So, going back to when I was growing up in the, in the Southern Baptist Church, uh, I would go to Sunday school. We would learn certain lessons or certain teachings about um, certain figures in the Bible. And one figure that stood out to me was David, King David, before he became a king. So um, there was a story about David that I appreciated because he was more than just a uh, giant slayer and a king. He was actually a sound healer. So one day, the uh, king before David, who was called King Saul, was having some pretty bad headaches brought on by evil spirits. So the members of his court told David, or told them to find someone who plays beautiful music, and they went out to a pasture to find David, who was sitting around with sheep, twirling his thumbs or something, and playing music. So David came to the, to the, uh, the temple, or the, or the place where Saul was, and Saul was in such turmoil because of the evil demons or whatever that was dealing with him. And David walked in with his lute like a rock star and put on his lute and began playing. And each note, it said that each note that he played